Welcome to the Signal Traders Group. Our website is blog.signaltraders.com where we put together effective video technical analysis trading plans on a daily basis. And I want to thank you for watching our video and those of you who have been watching our channel here on YouTube and on other sites across the net that I always like to start off with a little humor. So how many people, especially back in March, had this statement at the coffee table that their 401k now looks like a 201k. And the funny thing is I was actually talking with my dad last night that you know he was one of the people that sold back in March and you know, it looks like he should have stated. <laughs> Remember, cash is a position. So this is part two in our series on how to trade channels. Again, this is part two. Um, in part one, we talked about what are channels and what do we use them for. And basically, they help us determine overvalued and undervalued points. They tell us points of support and resistance and they tend to work with a moving average. Um, and then we talked about the different types of channels, and there's basically two types. There's the straight line channel, which again we covered in the first video, and then there's standard deviation channels, which is what we're going to focus on here on this video. And so what are these standard deviation channels? Well, there's some that you pretty much have heard of. Uh, Bollinger Bands. Who haven't heard of Bollinger Bands? It's one of the most popular uh, technical indicators out there. And again, primarily used to determine overbought and oversold levels. And then it's also a measure of the volatility of the stock. How much action, how much volume is coming into the stock? Keltner band, Bands are very similar to Bollinger Bands, and they're used as single price breakouts. Uh, when we actually pull up the charts, you'll see a little bit more. But again, instead of measuring the volatility of the stock, this makes changes. The bands change based upon the volatility of a the stock. Then we have the mobile bands, memento bands. So this was introduced by Dave Elliott. He's a uh, first wave from WallStreetTeachers.com. And this is basically a modification on a typical Bollinger Band settings. And where with the Bollinger Bands, you want to capture the move inside the bands. The mobile bands, you want to capture the move outside the bands. But again, we're going to get to this as we move on. And the fourth type of standard deviation channel is a linear regression. Now some might say, well, isn't a linear, reg linear, linear regression channel just a straight channel? In a way it is, but again, since we're talking about standard deviation, that's why this statistical tool focusing on forecasting future prices in this section versus the straight channels. So let's go ahead and start right off the back with the linear regression channel. And as you look at our picture right here, this is why you might say, well, why is it not in the straight channel uh, section? But again, it is a standard deviation. And again, you can see how we're looking for overvalued price when we hit to the top of the line and oversold and buying potentials here down as we get to the bottom of the line. First thing you can see is that it's a mainly used to identify trends. So obviously in our little picture here, we have an uptrend. And the linear regression line which is right here in the middle. And then we have the upper channel and the lower channel which are parallel lines, two standard deviations away from the linear regression line. And again, one way, it's, it's, it's another way of looking at extremes. When we start getting up here to the top, Yes, we're possibly overbought, and now we're looking to sell. And when we start getting down here, down to the bottom line, that's running parallel, we're oversold, and we need to look at buying. Again, it's about extremes, and, and has it, have we gone too far? Um, it's a great uh, trend indicator. It's a great support and resistance indicator, and I certainly like it. And what's really going to be cool is when we get to, to the uh, later in our video, we're going to show you and we're going to start looking at some trends, and we can see which one of these is giving us the best signals. We're, uh, but what I want to do now, again, is, is build that foundation for what each one of these are. Now, as we said, uh, Bollinger Band is one of the more popular um, standard deviation channels. Uh, what we basically have is a moving average, usually a 20 moving average, and then we have an upper band, which is two standard deviations up, and we have a lower band that is two standard deviations be below. And you can see in our picture, we're capturing the move inside. The, the price graph, the action, the candles are all inside of the blue bands, the upper band and the lower band. And again, you can see this uh, oversold, overbought areas where you can buy and sell. To be, put a little bit more specific to that, let's take a look at some buy signals and some sell signals with Bollinger Bands. Now we have that same picture from the last screen and you can see that a trader may consider to buy when the price touches the bottom of the band. 
that could be a buy signal. And on the opposite, today trader may consider to sell when the price action breaks above the upper band. Uh, because again, the Bollinger Bands are still trying to capture the action. Very similar to the linear regression, except for the bands, as you can see, fluctuate instead of a straight line. But again, we're looking for extremes. And so that's why the bands are giving us uh, oversold and overbought buy sell signals. Now, the other thing that we can see with the Bollinger Bands that we will not get from uh, linear regression is the breakouts. And in our an example here, we have a consolidation period where the stock basically is channeling and is, as you can see, the bands begin to narrow. And that's basically is where we're getting a congestion and we're getting a building up of pressure. <clears throat> and it, now, what we typically don't know is which way the stock's going to break out. And what we can see here towards the end is that the narrowing of the bands begin to widen. Well, that is considered to be the breakout. That is the indicator that we're going to get a Bollinger Band breakout. This is a Bollinger Band squeeze type play. And so as the bands widen up, that could be a breakout. So when the price action breaks above, that is where we want to enter the bullish. Or if it breaks below, that's where we want to enter the bearish. Now, I'm not talking out of both sides. In our upper picture here, Yes, we're catching the, the, uh, the action inside the bands, and as it gets to the top, we sell. What is different on the bottom one is, again, we have that period of consolidation, that period where the bands narrow, and when they break out, now that is an actual buy signal because we're looking for that volatility and that pressure that's been building up during this consolidation to blow up and the stock to move. Keltner bands. Again, Keltner bands look very similar to um, Bollinger bands, and uh, it's kind of what we were talking about before, where we're looking at the upper and the lower bands and the changes to the volatility. Now, what you don't see is this is more straight uh, compared to the Bollinger bands, and what we're getting for our break breakouts is when we break above the bands, um, we're seeing that extremes, and as we come back to the bands, that is our buying and selling signals. So again, during the consolidation, uh, the bands are not working that well. You can see here we're consolidating, and the bands aren't giving us a good signal. However, when we close below the lower band, that is a, a, an indication that you may consider to buy. And so what you'll see, especially on narrow range days, uh, tight consolidation days for futures traders, you'll see people buying the touch of the lower band and selling the touch of the upper band because again we're catching the extreme prices with the bands. Our last standard deviation channel that we're going to cover are momentum bands. And momentum bands, as we talked about before, were developed by Dave Elliott. He's known as first wave in the trading world of WallStreetTeacher.com. And it's basically a modification of the settings for the Bollinger Bands. And the main thing that I want you to see is that with the Bollinger Mobile Bands, the price action is on the outside of the bands, and Bollinger Bands and the Keltner Bands, all of the price action was inside those bands. The volatility was inside the bands, but when we look at the mobile bands, these two white lines here, the action is on the outside. So that's great for trying to identify how long to stay in the trade, and we'll go over rules later. But you can see that the action is on the outside of the bands, and it's great for identifying trends, and it's great for using as a troll stop to keep you inside of a trade. Now. In our next video, we're now going to take all that we've learned about straight channels and standard deviation channels, and we're going to pull up some charts and actually look at which one gives us the best entry, exit, staying in the trade. We're going to compare them all, put them all on the same chart so that we can get an idea of which ones we think might be best. But you know we have some partners, and you guys know how much I believe in the psychology of trading. And we've got a great five-part audio series here. It's free. Download it. It'll help you develop the right mindset for trading. You guys know on our blog, we've got all kinds of videos and articles about getting trading and also trading futures. We've got a great charting platform, custom uh, scanning for your charts, especially those of you who do follow Dave Elliott. We've got a great futures broker for you. Look at the intraday e-mini margins, $300. You're not going to find that. And if you sign up through us, you can get 20 free contracts. And if you mind, why not try to demo the platform before you uh, switch over? But again, uh, we believe in the, the power of futures, the leverage of futures. So we also have a futures trading plan that's turnkey. You can open it up, trade it, and be profitable.
And we'll also have a futures trading room for you, 10-day trial for $29. If you've seen any of our videos, you know that we talk about how great um, the leader Alex has been doing with his calls and certainly can jumpstart your trading. But most importantly, remember, there is a risk of losing your entire portfolio. You need to trade your own risk. If you don't have the right mindset, if you don't have a system that you believe in, you will lose your money. So trade at your own risk. And I will see you guys in part three where we actually take the time to look at the charts on all of the standard deviation channels.